Hi, my name is Swathi Pandey. I'm online editor of ZocaloPublicSquare.org. I'm here today with Victor Meyer Schoenberger, the author of Delete, The Virtue of Forgetting in a Digital Age. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So I'm curious, you, you discuss in the book the technological advances that allow us to remember from language to the internet. Can you tell me a little bit about what the internet remembers and how? Sure. Uh, the internet is a phenomenal uh, tool to remember, to permit us to create external storage uh, of information that can be easily retrieved. Uh, it's quite remarkable because if we go back in human history, for all of human history in the analog times, remembering was the hard part, time-consuming, costly, took effort. Forgetting was easy, it was biologically, is biologically built into us human beings. Uh, and so that was the uh, basic balance that remembering uh, was the exception and forgetting the default. And through the digital age, uh, through a confluence of digitization, of uh, plummeting digital storage costs, uh, of the ability with software and tools to retrieve information quickly, and with a global infrastructure of access and distribution, we now have a tool available uh, through which we can remember uh, much more easily. So remembering in a digital age has become the norm, uh, the default, and forgetting the exception. If we've been moving towards remembering for so long, why is forgetting important? Should we still want to forget? Yes. Well. For once, of course, because biologically it was built into us human beings, we never had to deliberately learn how to forget. Forgetting was automatic. Uh, and so because forgetting was automatic, we really focused on the things that weren't automatic, namely the remembering part. Now, of course, remembering is automatic, and we ought to focus on the forgetting part that isn't automatic anymore. And that's where the trouble comes in. Um, we humans have never learned deliberately to devalue or depreciate information, experiences, and events in our past that are no longer relevant to our present. Uh, and so, if we are today constantly confronted with our past, um, through our email inbox, through the Flickr images, through blog posts, through Googling, and others Googling us, um, we uh, cannot essentially forget anymore. Uh, and that is troubling because it does not permit us to evolve, to generalize, and to abstract, to see the forest rather than the trees. Uh, it denies us what our Argentinian short story writer Jorge Luis Borges called uh, what makes us truly human, uh, namely the ability to evolve, to grow, to move on, and to learn. Um, if uh, we cannot forget, we are forever teethered to an ever more detailed past rather than being able to live in the present. Uh, it is very hard for us to cognitively adjust. And so, having thought about it for quite some time and having preferred cognitive adjustment, I had, after reading a lot of cognitive psychology, had to come to the conclusion that perhaps the best approach for us is to revive forgetting in a digital age. How would we do that? Well, um, the idea is to basically establish mechanisms and processes individually, societally, technologically, legally, on whatever front you want, that enable us to get rid of information that is no longer relevant for us. Uh, we could have more information ecology laws that mandate that we discard information that is no longer relevant, DNA information or the drunk driver citation that is no longer relevant. Uh, it might also be helpful to have some individual tools and mechanisms available at expiration dates for information. So that whenever we store an image or a file, we not only give it a name, but also an expiry or use by date. And we can choose that date, whatever we want, and change it later on if we, if we want to. Uh, but the important uh, element of that is um, that it gives us a chance to reflect and to choose how long we want to preserve information rather than having built into our digital tools an implicit bias of perfect digital remembering. You have a fascinating metaphor about for forgetting how humans forget. You say it's like a web page with no links mm -hmm. to it. Yes. So does the internet forget? No, the internet doesn't forget because both the internet stores the web pages, if you want, or the information, but it also stores links to the information. We now have tools like Google and Bing and many others 
available plus uh, a huge cloud of tags uh, and meta information that permit us to retrieve uh, information that is stored on the internet and the various information sources. Uh, so not only the information doesn't go away, but the links to the information uh, continue to exist as well. That creates that tremendously powerful but also potentially dangerous digital memory. How is it dangerous? Can you give me some examples? Sure. Um, well, a number of ways. For example, it gives those that have access to the information power, potential power over us. Uh, they know more about us than we might remember ourselves. Keep in mind that search engines for a long period of time, particularly Google, has uh, kept uh, on file every search query it ever received. And it receives about a billion a day. Uh, and every search results everybody, anybody ever clicked on, linking these search queries to people and to individuals uh, is quite a powerful tool. It might reveal when we looked for uh, a motel for an illicit affair uh, in our past or when we uh, looked at substance abuse because perhaps we had a problem with it. Uh, it might reveal when we looked for an apartment or to buy a house uh, and when we were expecting perhaps a child. Uh, it reveals a lot of information about us, uh, information that perhaps we have forgotten, but others haven't, and so that uh, gives them power over us. Now, if we realize that others have power over us, that society has power over us, anybody has potential information about us, we might self-censor what we put online, what we share with others. That impoverishes our public sphere online, our communication, our exchange. I wouldn't want that to happen. Um, worse, uh, it might also force us to self-censor, and that undermines robust public discourse, which is a hallmark of our democracy.